love this. I totally agree on so many levels. Now, I'm not sure if it got big. You know, there's 120 people registered a month from now just to review the next bet, the year-end bet. I know. I, I know, posted man. that Crazy. earlier. I, that's, that's, yeah, yeah. It's really, you know, for me, Bitcoin, and not to steal your, your uh, what you're going to talk about, but I'll fill a little gap in for you because I know starting these meetings are the hardest part. Um, but I find it really fascinating that all the industries I've ever been involved in, which are, you know, quite a few, Bitcoin's the only one that brings so many people together from so many different walks of life in so many different stratospheres from the very top to the very bottom bottom um and uh that's just I, I just think it's really unique um and something i don't take lightly i, I don't even think that the price that we have it today that any of that value is calculated in the seventy five thousand or seventy two thousand dollar price or wherever we are um whatsoever and i i just you know sometimes want to remind myself that I would not have met any of you people, uh, good or bad, uh, had it not been about the topic of Bitcoin. We can say we're talking about finance or whatever, but really Bitcoin is the central theme here. And I, I just think I, I'm, I'm very grateful for it. And I, I really just want to point out how unique that is for a business opportunity to have that kind of, uh, I don't even know what community, maybe expansion of community naturally, organically, without business uh, friction. Uh, maybe that's the best way to put it. So anyway, Dude, just want to say that, man. I'm, I'm, really like you. I, I'm with you. I mean, you could have 0.1 BTC or you could have a thousand BTC, but there's just something about it that brings us all together because we're rooting for the same thing and we're all in it together. And that just builds the sense of community. And Michael Saylor has been talking about it. I mean, there's your relationships before Bitcoin and your relationships after Bitcoin. And everybody in this space right now will say that their relationships after Bitcoin are way better. Uh, we got some legends coming up to the stage here to speak. So I'm going to try and shut up and turn it over to somebody else. Yeah, it's actually hard to talk to some of my old friends. Uh, once you kind of get orange pilled and you fall down the rabbit hole, it's uh, tough to have some normal conversations when you see the potential of what Bitcoin can do and what it could bring to the world. It just makes other things so seem so unimportant. And a good example of the opposite, Gary, is, uh, as you're very familiar, in, in real estate. Even in real estate, there's there seems to be a lot of factions of people who, they do commercial, they do residential, they do industrial, they believe industrial is more valuable than hotel. And there's always like, even people in real estate are fighting each other every day about fixed rate mortgages versus adjustable. I mean, it's like there's a million things to fight about. And yeah, Bitcoiners fight. But at the end of the day, whether you're Michael Saylor or whether, you know, like Neil said, you have 0.1 Bitcoin, it's all the same team. And that's a really cool thing. I, I can't really think other than sports of a lot of things that are that are similar. Well, Beagle said 0.1 Bitcoin, but I agree with the sentiment as well. <laughs> So where, where are we going from here? I mean, we've, we've been calling out price predictions all day in spaces, all-time high today. We, 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 we're gambling Satoshis on what we think the price is going to be in 62 minutes, on what the price is going to be at the halving, on what the price is going to be at the end of the year. I'm, I'm curious uh, what anybody wants to say. Mondays seem like the obvious thing right now. It seems like every Monday we go up. Dude, the best thing about the ETFs are they made Monday the best day of the week. I mean, that, that like that's that's a huge victory. I, I sit now on Sunday, and it used to be the Sunday scaries, and now it's just sitting there waiting. Like, I can't wait to see what the price does on Monday. Yeah, hey, guys, enjoy that because that gap will get filled, okay? Their J Japanese office will take over. I mean, that, that'll get filled. There, there's no way they're going to let that big gap. But it's there. It's so obvious what's happening right now. Who else we got? Who who th who thinks 
Anybody want to predict the price in one hour? I mean, one hour? You're, 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 the, you're the man with the crystal ball, Gary. I mean, we're, no, 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 we're, for we're the, coming for the to guy, you for maybe, price predictions. No, maybe for the guys that didn't, um, since we go out so many decimals. <laughs> See, this game has so many angles on it. It's unbelievable. One, I think the game we're playing, Bitcoin, is actually going to do uh, bring up a lot of discussion of why someone would only ever trade Satoshis for Satoshis, right? And But you would never do this in, w w into a fiat or into a potato chip. Like that, I've never understood. Because I think I really get the true value of this. I mean, the core, core, core value. Of, you know, everything goes bad. Um, so, you know, I, I would like to see maybe what people think in one hour. I mean, this thing... Who knows what could happen? I mean, absolutely. But we're going to have I mean, so right? many. Well, one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin, and we're, we're, we're not measuring things in fiat anymore. And there, there's no way that we're sending each other fiat when we're settling up our bets. We're sending it in Bitcoin. And what's hilarious is everybody, and I've, I've DM'd a few of us now who made one of these 100,000 Satoshi bets. We're going and we're buying the Satoshis immediately to put in our stack because we're not touching our stack to pay our bet at all. I know Neil did it this afternoon. I think he did it when he was in the space earlier today. I did it as well. Like, the, the, like, we, like, fuck the fiat. Like, we're, we're, we're on the Bitcoin standard now, especially uh, in this degenerate gambler, gambler group that we're spinning up. Well, you also See, that's, want to that's right, the price. Right, right, right. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I, I was just saying, it's like you're, you're self-hedging yourself. I mean, you, you're, the, it's... It's a beautiful thing when you start thinking that way. Yeah, you got to buy those sats. You don't want the price to run away from you, and then you have to dip into your own uh, your own stash, even though it's only, uh, like, what, 70 bucks worth of Bitcoin right now. Bitcoin's done crazy things over the years, and you don't want to be on the wrong side. I mean, that's what I was telling British Hoddle when he was saying the bet wasn't enough. I was like, we don't know what this end of the year bet is going to be on New Year's Eve. I mean, it's, you know, $70 now, but we're measuring things in Satoshi's. This could be $10 million by the time we get there. We don't know. Our great grandkids are going to be pissed. Oh, they're going to be fucking furious. Now, see, that brings up an interesting bet, okay? What if you did a, a 100,000 Satoshi's for three years now that's a bet i mean that bet down. it's I'll t I'll, I'll, I'll no Andy. seriously I'll see that's a really action. good that's a really good alt play okay you want to play the alt game man to me that's a much better play i like that idea we should look right. at, you know stew on that one a little bit all right, we we close out every bet uh, or every spaces with a hundred thousand. Talk about an option. Bet, so that's that that's going to be the one today. Is we're going to do the uh, the three year the three year price target. It's going to be the next one. We'll be, Let's start we'll betting be right on there. block times. Let's start betting on when the next. How many blocks are going to happen this hour? <laughs> oh my God! This is we're we're actually going to need to get a sponsor at this point. If we're yeah, that's the generosity. Better than gambling on shit coins. A, oh, 100%. I have a question for you because I think there's not a, a lot of boomers on the call um, like you and I, perhaps. But um, as, as you look, think of uh, modeling, it, you know, when people look at their portfolios and for retirement, I think the retirement age is left shifting down uh, with Bitcoin in a portfolio. So the classic 60 40 split where you take out 4%. And, you know, it's supposed to last you forever. I think the algebra on that, on that changes. If you, I mean, if you just look at the returns over the last 15 years and pick any, uh, any time window you want, you know, uh, you know, a, a seven to 8% return just seems ridiculous. It's just, it doesn't seem like that's in the cards. If you were to take out in this model, something like 18%, which even seems low in the current context, you were able to take out 1% of your liquid uh, holdings per month. And when I think when you do that and you look at your retirement, I think all of a sudden you say, wait a second, I, c I, I can be retired a lot sooner than I was thinking about this idea of retiring at 65 or some, 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 some date like that. It left shift significantly. 
depending on how big your stack is and what your lifestyle is. What, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. And I mean, when, 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 when people are still investing in bonds these days, and when you talk about 60, 40, I mean, that, that, that shit is dead. And as more and more people now move into Bitcoin and this rocket ship takes off, uh, the FOMO is just going to kick in more and you're not going to look at Bitcoiners earning 50%, 100% a year and just sit on the sidelines. And that's, you know, I, I'm in his comments every single post because, you know, Dave Portnoy, stool presidente, talking about missing Bitcoin and him selling his Bitcoin at 20000 and saying things like, all these Bitcoiners, all, they're, all they have to do is just buy Bitcoin and they're getting rich. It's not fair. Like, nothing is better than that. And I think that's, that's the mentality playing out right now. Watching the whole situation with Dave, amazing. It was so fun to watch it all play out. Get in his comments with me, everyone, please. I, I, I'm calling out Miss Peaches. Like he's, she's his dog that he's posting about every day now. I want her to buy Bitcoin. Like, like it's it's teleporting to 100k, and we got to get. So hey, hey, hey can you give me the Bitcoin. story? Can you give me the story on Portney? Give me the whole background. I, yeah, so like me, so, I don't follow a lot of this stuff, and maybe there's yeah, other the, people that don't know. The, the, this is going to be like super thirty thousand foot view, but I'm going to try my best to succinctly summarize his experience with Bitcoin, like because, four years of history. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here, here I go, everybody. Like, uh, sit down, get your popcorn, uh, get comfortable. Like, he had the Winklevoss twins inviting them to his beach house like five years ago, and they personally orange pilled him. And then my understanding is he went in and on like FTX or something, he bought a, a million dollars worth of Bitcoin back in the day, like a serious amount of Bitcoin. And then as the FTX meltdown happened, and this is what he says, and like, you know, granted, I'm that, reiterating this. Nah, I think you're messing up the facts just a little bit. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Neil then. Neil, yeah, Neil I'll, might I'll, know it better. Neil, so yeah, the Winklevoss went to his house. They, they uh, orange pilled. Uh, that's a very generous way to to say it, I mean, their arguments were that uh, gold is abundant because it's on asteroids. Um, they got him to like, buy it. Yeah, they got they got him. To well, buy yeah, it. but they also they good. also had him buy like shit coins too, like Link and Safe Moon, like millions of dollars or I don't know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth. Anyways, he did this all on Gemini. Then when the FTX you know fiasco collapse happened, he went on to Gemini and he was afraid. Because of what was going on, at, this is what he claims. He was afraid about what was going on on FTX, so he wanted to see if he could still sell his Bitcoin. And he said, "Oh, I only meant to sell a little, but he sold all like thirty all Bitcoin <laughs> that he had, but six Bitcoin, right? But when it was at like nineteen thousand dollars or twenty thousand, <laughs> the very bottom. <laughs> and now, you know, a month ago, he went back in his account. And he and was it a lot. Was, it was like 30 Bitcoin, so, you know, I don't, whatever that would be right now. Well, Gary finds that yeah. in his couch, per the spaces <laughs> earlier. You know, I'm just trying to get a sense of the size of the crime. I mean, that's not like 10,000 Bitcoin, right? It's, no, that, that no. would be a, it's like, yeah. No, but yeah, his, no, no. the funny, his whole goal was to make money, and so he bought at like the high, and then he sold at the very bottom because he got scared, and he's been talking about this for years. Right, he claims he didn't sell on purpose his whole stash. At the yeah, bottom. he said he just wanted to sell some, and he accidentally sold the whole thing. Which I fat kind thing, of believe. Fat finger, huh? He's we not. Change his name to Fat Finger. He's not the brightest, so it's it's plausible that he's telling the truth. Yeah, he doesn't I, I seem like a liar. Telling the truth, like he strikes me as a straight <laughs> shooter. Like you're right, he's not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I think he's telling the truth. I don't know. I think he pulled off a pretty good deal with Barstool. I don't know if that's. Uh... He's a great marketer, but it doesn't make him, uh, you know, super intelligent necessarily. Uh, I think that Barstool deal was pretty intelligent. I mean, for sure, he sold his business for a hundred, four hundred million dollars, and then he bought it back for a dollar, like five years later, and he's killing it right now. So, I mean, everybody get in his comments and get him to buy Bitcoin because I think he's one of those that we, if we get him on Team Bitcoin and he's using his megaphone and he's on the rocket ship as it goes up from you know seventy to a hundred thousand. I'm using the word teleport to try and 
visualize for these normies how quickly we're going to get to a hundred thousand dollars i mean for christ's sake he like he's slinging spirit airline stock right now like like he he could do better so help me bitcoin bros get 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 stool presidente on the right on the right bus Communist. You keep muting us accidentally. What time? What time, uh, what, time oh, what time does today's bet end? By the way. Wait, just one thing about Portnoy and his business uh, savviness that you're trying to give him here. He kind of fell. In, he. It was very serendipitous what happened to him. He was so toxic that. Penn, the company, you know, that bought a large part of Barstool, couldn't get gambling gambling regulators in other states to, you know, negotiate with them. Hey, Neil, when was the last time you sold something for half a billion dollars? I don't give a fuck. the opportunity to have it back for a dollar. No, but he didn't plan any of that shit. I mean, he, he, is, he is one of those just... He didn't plan people. any of that shit. I, I, I agree. There, there, yeah, stop saying like that it was some like, he's, genius. He's, I think he's smart. I don't know. Someone that sells something for half a billion dollars and buys it back for a dollar. Yeah, he bought it back for a dollar because it doesn't make any money. Um, yeah, but like, he, he, yeah he, and they, he's definitely no one else rich. wanted it. Yeah, he's definitely rich, but like... He, he, the, the sale to Penn was kind of a failure because the stock wasn't doing well and the stock had to be sold to ESPN and the big companies that were buying it didn't, uh, didn't want to involved. Well, they didn't want Barstool involved because the regulators were worried that Barstool would have conflicts of interest with the gambling sites and they were they were concerned about like some of their me, some of their social media commentary and whatnot. But Jack Mahler's had a, like a big long sit down with them and like talked about like barstool getting Bitcoin on their balance sheet, like to help their balance sheet and keep their company profitable. And then like when Bitcoin went to like 60,000, he was, when he was screaming about selling it at 20 grand, he was saying like, we should have had Bitcoin on our barstool balance sheet, you know? And like, I don't know why we weren't, you know? And, and, you know, he's thinking about it. There's no question that he can't like, Bitcoin's on his mind. It's on everybody's mind who who pays attention to anything financial. Oh, he's thinking about it every single day. I mean, that's why we just got to get him on now. And so he's talking about it every day instead of Spirit Airlines. He's talking about Bitcoin. And uh, Miss Peaches, too. I mean, th that's the dog he rescued who's now the face of his social media. We got to get her on board as well. Yeah, like everybody who, even people who are coping like thinking I, I'm too late to Bitcoin or I didn't get Bitcoin early enough or I should have bought Bitcoin are watching the Bitcoin price. Like everybody is thinking about it. Like it's on everybody's mind. Even the fucking white house is thinking about it. Like it's, 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 it's bigger than it's bigger than the markets that than the price and it's bigger than like everything in financial markets right now yeah i'll uh, speak for myself but i'm sure some of you all can commiserate for those of us still uh slaving away in the fiat mines i'm not getting any work done like on days like today it's literally on x refreshing the price of bitcoin and hanging out with my bitcoin bros yeah it it can be unproductive like to sit there and watch the price when it's going up and celebrating it and shit yeah for sure we got spaces starting every 15 minutes too where we can hop into this and we're, we're gambling on the price i mean you know, we, we had to, like on chain wants to be gambling on block time where the hash rates on, every 30 on minutes is a new all-time high yeah 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 guys so this is my fourth this is my fourth cycle now and the last three i all had a job for and now that i'm you know homeless and unemployed it's so much better because I can just sit around on on X all day. Yeah, we so sell the dude who sold his house to move to India. I just, yeah, like, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're moving. We're moving tomorrow. We're flying out. Legend. Yeah. Oh, legend. Can you can you talk more on that? What made you choose India over anywhere else? Uh, I served my Mormon mission in India from two thousand six to two thousand eight. So I am familiar with the country. Love the people. Love the culture. Love the food. And it's affordable. And uh, just excited to. And are you are you trying to achieve a stacking goal, or are you just trying to live a great life? 
Um, it's kind oh, of both. Well, I didn't really have a specific stacking goal. I've been stacking since 2013. Um, it's not like I'm one of these guys with thousands of coins, like that guy that was on one of Fred's spaces the other day. But I've had, you know, I'm already a multi-Bitcoiner. And um, it was more like I started looking at that <coughs> um, priced in Bitcoin 21 chart all the time. And I started looking at the median U.S. house um, price and just how, you know, everything, obviously real estate, but everything gets cheaper priced in Bitcoin in the long run. And I kind of started getting obsessed with that. And I was like, let's just, let's just sell our freaking house. And we lost a house for two Bitcoins, you know? So yeah, Bitcoin goes a lot further in other countries where their currency is getting devalued at a great faster rate for sure. Yeah, yeah, I feel like we're living two orders of magnitude. All of our savings is in Bitcoin. Like, you know, the dollar to Bitcoin, and then we're going to be spending rupees. So it's like the rupees to the dollar, and then dollars to the Bitcoin. And so it's like we're just going to spend nothing, you know? I mean, yeah, like another thing, like everybody's talking about, like, look at, look at, like, the, the financial news networks today. Like, they, they asked fucking Donald Trump about it. And, <laughs> yeah. And Donald Trump, like, literally changed his position he's already waffling like that on like what he thinks about it you know and like and and uh they and, and this the michael saylor interview was uh, like exceptionally long like they had him on for a good 15 minutes um it's like everybody's watching bitcoin right now yeah and that interview was freaking great too i mean it was 12 minutes of gold i mean I, like it, somebody said earlier that they were trying to clip it but they couldn't find the the clips that they should pull out of it i mean he's it's like him on I mean, CNBC so i started doing thinking about selling the house when before. bitcoin was just trading sideways at 25 grand forever this last year right and my rationale at the time was i think we can live on 12 grand a year in india and do okay like and uh so that's half a Bitcoin for two years. <laughs> and obviously I expected it to go up too, but I was like, worst case, we sell our house, profit like 10 Bitcoins, you know, uh, live on half a Bitcoin and then come back and buy a house for three Bitcoins. And that's basically what, what the thinking is. I mean, that math works. That, that Bitcoin math works. That's rock solid. You're, and your wife is a legend for agreeing to this. You won't need three Bitcoin to buy a house. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that too. Gary, can you, this is, this is something that HODL talks about a lot, which is that homes will revert to their utility value rather than store of value. Right, um, Airbnb. What do you guys think the realistic value of a home is if it doesn't have store of value? Dude, that's, that's, a a that's a great question. And think of all the rich. Because this is something I try to explain to my houses. girlfriend. And she's like, well, renting is more expensive than owning because X, Y, Z. And it, it's like, true, but that's assuming that if you own the home, it retains its, its store value property. And if that goes away, what's the real home value? There's three ways to value a property. Cash flows, comparable sales, or reconstruction value. So obviously you're not going to be, right now we base the value of property mostly on cash flows. And it's not like the value of a home isn't how much it costs to build. So that's probably where we'll just go, in my opinion. Or the price of Bitcoin, about like point, point 0.5 Bitcoin. I mean, but, but even if you assume mm -hmm. that your rent is, say, like 2500 a month, and you're paying that over the course of a year, over 30 years, that's $900,000. I know homes live longer than 30 years with proper maintenance, but still, that's, that's kind of yeah, where there's, they're at There's now. a lot of other factors that go into it. Location, you know, what's around it, you know, like the market, the local market, uh, the demand in the, in the local market, like beachside homes are going to be a lot more expensive than, you know, homes in the middle of the country, you know. It's just natural. You know, and the bigger story to tell is there's, you know, twenty trillion yeah, dollars so, um, in property. I'm in our house is in Provo, Utah. Sure. I don't think you can hear Beagle. I think you gotta step down and step up. Oh, sorry. Yeah, spaces is still glitchy as hell. Elon's Elon's working so on it. But when you come back, remember to say what you were saying. Yeah. I, I was just saying there's twenty trillion dollars 
tied up in property right now. And just think about how the, how many empty houses are owned by rich people just because they have nothing else to do with their money. And once they start to realize that they could be buying Bitcoin instead of owning empty houses all over the country, I mean, it's just another bullish scenario that's going to be playing out over the next It's not just years. rich people. Like, it's up, like, it's middle class people buying Airbnbs in, like, you know, tourist towns, like, and, and renting them out. And, like, you know, they're subbing out a fucking maintenance and cleaning company and, you know, somebody to rent it. And they're just picking spots and they're, and they're doing it because they have to. I mean, uh, forever buying a house was your ticket to the middle class and the American dream. And I think we're all sitting front stage to witness buying Bitcoin becoming your new ticket to the middle class and the American dream. And, you know, buying, buying a house still important we all need a place to live but it's probably no longer going to be the guaranteed uh it should, be for, it should be for consumption you know like that's the bottom line like you know it, it's it's a house should be priced for its consumption value like it's 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 value to be consumed not, not its monetary premium what happens to the price of houses if the credit markets shift and you can't get a 30-year mortgage anymore I mean, walk, walk walk us through the scenario where that where that happens. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, so thirty year mortgages are have, haven't been around forever. Uh, to put yourself on the other side as a counterparty to the thirty year mortgage. I'm going to borrow money at six percent, seven percent for thirty years. Would you give someone money for at seven percent or eight percent? Yeah, years? because the house the, because the bank doesn't have to give anything up, and they can just. They can, they, you know, the, the the loan is secured, and they can take it. But they can take it, you know, and they don't even have to. They don't have to put anything up. But the system, the, the system only works because those loans are packaged into mortgage-backed securities and bought by somebody. What I'm saying is right. that system comes undone, and it's very difficult to be able to deliver thirty-year mortgages with with that price assurity. So. If you go back and read Liar's Poker, which is um, a book about Solomon Smith Party, where they really invented mortgage-backed securities and how to package up mortgages, because it's extremely difficult to be able to, to give somebody guaranteed interest for 30 years. Essentially, when you're doing that, you have to find somebody who's willing to take that counterparty. And that has been like pension funds and large funds who are looking for some long-term returns. What I'm saying is that whole system has the possibility of coming undone, where it's very difficult to structure products that way. And you're going to see loans move back to more what they are in some other countries and, and what they were before 30-year mortgage. It was like seven-year mortgage. So how much of the price of a, of a house across the nation is as a result of a credit product at 30 years that would be a different price in terms of affordability if you could only get a seven-year loan or had to put a lot more down in cash? I mean, just, just listening to you walk through that, I'm going to take a stab and say, you know, half of the value of these homes out there, if people couldn't get a 30-year mortgage and they were forced to pay for it in seven years, uh, the, 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 the values would be decimated. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if it's half. It's a, it's a significant number of how much inflation there is in houses in general as a result of having 30-year mortgages. And just yeah, but aren't, Thomas, aren't they, like, are they already like doing like 40 year mortgages in some banks now. Yes. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not saying that that's not happening. What I'm saying is if you look at the macro fiscal situation, what's going on with the fed and what's going on with the fiscal situation where we're having, uh, you know, a trillion dollars added to the national debt, you know, you've got these bond auctions that are happening. There's one happening this Wednesday, uh, and you're having fewer and few people wanting to show up, uh, for that interest. Now, Powell has said they're going to cut interest rates three times this year. Um, and th that makes sense because we have an inverted yield curve, and you're going to see that happen. When interest rates start to come back down, there's going to be less demand for that debt. And so you're going to start to see the Fed probably intervene with yield curve intervention, and they're going to end up buying so a lot of those longer-dated maturities. So what you're saying is that like, to buy a home eventually if the 30-year mortgage you know, aren't, aren't uh, aren't being issued in high rates that um, you're going to need you're going to need 
currency or hard money to actually buy Bitcoin or buy homes, you're going to need something. You're not, it's not going to be able to bug people with that. It's a thought exercise. I'm not saying it's like going to happen. I think of, or I, I'm, I'm constantly thinking about risk and the so what of happening. So let's think of the so what of this. Pensions come to the conclusion that a 4%, a 5%, a 10% allocation to Bitcoin is their ticket to return for their, uh, their pension obligations. Historically, they've gone after things like mortgage-backed securities and other things like that to give them a guaranteed return. But it hasn't been keeping up, especially when the interest rates for a long time were very low. And so they couldn't keep up with their obligations. So they're constantly chasing yield. So now they see this Bitcoin asset. And they're saying, all right, let's put 10% there. And you can run all the models and say that's a pretty good deal. Um, so now they do that. They're just, the implication of that then is the demand for the mortgage-backed securities that are coming from those pension funds starts to diminish as the adoption of Bitcoin happens in these funds. Uh, that could also be true for uh, corporate treasuries who start to buy Bitcoin as part of corporate holdings. They buy they buy a corporate uh, treasury. They may buy, uh, you know, ten percent Bitcoin or five percent Bitcoin, and then put the rest in very short treasuries, like three or three months treasuries, and just roll them. So you have this lack of demand for the long dated uh, uh, debt, which is where the whole mortgage industry is based on. So all I'm saying is, you have when you think through the implications of what are the things that could cause impacts to the macro economy. The adoption of Bitcoin at some level comes at the expense of something else. And in this case, I think it's mortgage-backed securities uh, uh, have a risk of Bitcoin adoption by these funds. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. And I think the bond market is is similar to that. And we were talking about this earlier, but you know, we all love to cheer the price of Bitcoin going up and up and up. But Honestly, if Bitcoin does get to 1 million, 5 million, 10 million, 100 million, like all the maxis talk about, like that is going to be downright ugly for the American economy. Uh, and most it's going to be downright there. ugly for the credit markets, like what, what, what Thomas is kind of saying, like in general, like, go ahead, hold. Okay, hey, sorry. Um, so let me give you guys my house story. Um, so our house is in Provo, Utah. And we bought in 2017, and it's a house from 1966, and we paid, we got a mortgage, a 0% basically, I mean a 0% down mortgage, and uh, paid 285 for that guy, and uh, we just sold it for 750 and um, we put a lot of sweat equity into it, I mean it was pretty sick by the time we were done with it, um, and we weren't doing it to flip it. We were doing it to live there, but decided to do go this route now. But um, yeah, Damn, no, you man. killed it on that trade with Bitcoin too. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the thing. It's like nuts, nuts for six years, going uh, just put the equity play on the house, and then roll that over into Bitcoin now, and it's just it's going to be crazy. I think so. That's where we're kind of coming from. But we are giving up the two point, you know, two point nine refinance that we did in 2020. So. Damn, bro. How are you going to let go of that 2.9? I let it go because because he got a bigger return from Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin's going to kill that. That's that's why. But that was the painful part. Yeah, I'm kidding. Of course I'm kidding. I mean, you walked away from 2.9 of refinance fiat to live the dream in India owning a bunch of Bitcoin with your wife. You're you're a fucking legend. And he, and he almost tripled his Bitcoin, his, the Bitcoin value so far. Get in Stool Presidente's comments, please, please. Tell him your story. Davey Day Trader needs to buy some Bitcoin and stop buying shit stocks, dog Dude. shit dogs with fleas. Someone check on his Spirit Airlines trade. I mean, I saw it when he initially was slinging that shit, and today I just had to look at it to see where it was. It's down like started... 85%. Oh, it's, 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 it's a bloodbath. It's a total fucking bloodbath. Yeah, that's been his like favorite trade on that thing, and it just gets nuked every time he buys it. That's right. He buys Bitcoin right now before this fucking bull market really gets ripping. I mean, he is going to be like Michael Saylor's little Bitcoin prodigy out there. Like he's going to be Bitcoin Jesus Junior. That's what kind of surprises me. Like 
that there's not more Michael Sailors yet. You know, like where, like I, I expected, like I expect five, at least five of them, like you know, near the S and P five hundred companies that are like, why the fuck am I not doing this? Like, I th- I think there's just such a stigma to still, and when like you have responsibilities to shareholders and the board, there's just such a stigma to it. Yeah, but um, it's a lot like, easier to explain. Like when Michael Saylor can lay out the playbook for you, and you could take it to them, and like, you know, like it, it can be explained. Especially when, like, Bitcoin solidified itself, like, to what it is today, you know? Oh, I mean, for sure. I 100% agree with you. I mean, we know Tim Cook, he owns Bitcoin. Check. Elon Musk owns Bitcoin. Check. Ray Dalio owns Bitcoin. Check. Bezos got personally orange-pilled by Sailor on his yacht. Check. I I still find it unbelievable that, um, like, Coinbase is not longer Bitcoin. Like, why is their balance sheet have less Bitcoin on it than Tesla? Like that to me is remarkable. Like they don't even make a physical product. They sell they sell digital trading, and like they they have revenue and cash flow, and they're not they're not stacking Bitcoin. Like and they have unlimited access to like capital markets, like Sailor does with their stock price. Like to the fact that they're not long enough Bitcoin is like that's absolutely shocking to me. Like I don't know what Brian Armstrong's plan is, but like. I mean, it's a shitcoin casino, so I'm not surprised that his business decisions are less than sound. Yeah, I know, but well, isn't not- isn't he also a B casher? I heard I heard yeah, somebody he talk was, about this the other day. He was he was you know siding with the big blockers during the block size wars. Yes. Oh fucking Christ! And like even before the block size wars, he was saying like Bitcoin is far ahead of everything else. We should be focusing on Bitcoin like and ignoring everything else, but like. Yeah, he took the side of the block of the of the big of the big blockers during the block size wars, but you know, that's a long time ago. Like at a certain point you gotta realize like your corporate strategy, like what is your long term corporate plan here? Like pump your stock and pretend it's pegged to Bitcoin, like because like its stock goes up when Bitcoin goes up, like because everybody assumes it's like somewhat of a proxy for Bitcoin, like and uh, I don't know. He spends money and time on layer twos for Ethereum and moving stable coins. And it's like it, it, I don't know what his strategy is, but like it needs to get more pro Bitcoin and and start thinking like big picture. I mean, I, I, I I'm totally just speaking off the cuff, but I have to imagine a big chunk of his profits are tied up in shit coins and shit coins on the platform, and he just like he can't walk away from it. But you're right. I mean, abandoning that and committing to Bitcoin is literally the only chance for that business to, to, to stay afloat. I mean, we know BlackRock and all of these other ETF providers, they're going to be moving the fidelity route to self-custody this shit themselves. And Coinbase crashing three times in the last week as we hit all-time highs, that's not exactly building confidence in investors and customers. Yeah, like what if what if Kraken went public, you know, and, and um, Coinbase had a competitor? Like the the lowest marginal cost for like selling shit coins is zero. Like it's nothing. It's you know like it, you know and, and they have to compete in an open market and they can't charge the big fees they charge the retail. Like they're they, you know that they just think they have this monopolistic system that is going to last forever. But I don't think it will. Like Gemini, I mean, what if Gemini went public and said, "I'm gonna you know why can't we do what Coinbase is doing?" You know. People have been whispering that Swan has been positioning themselves to go public for a while now. I mean, yeah, so we get Swan's, like a, rep, a, a reputable Bitcoin, Bitcoin only business. Yeah, like Swan, them. Yeah, Swan, doesn't gonna have, Swan doesn't have an exchange. Like they're just they they just sell Bitcoin. They 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 really they you know and take a premium for custodying it. Like, I mean, River River is another option there too as well. Bitcoin only reputable. Yeah, doesn't, and, and yeah, it doesn't, doesn't need to be a Bitcoin games. only company. Like. Any other company that can do the same thing as Coinbase does and give them a co- competitive market and lower the marginal cost, like, then you have to compete, you know, it, like, you can't just assume you have this monopoly and everybody's going to come to you. And when you have competition, the you know, the prices for trading and what it costs to trade, it goes down considerably and everybody, you know, will go to the cheapest place it is and where they get the best price, you know. Um, so like it, it doesn't, it, like it, it, it's not a long-term strategy because it's just a digital, a digital product, you know, like it doesn't, doesn't, there's nothing special about it. Like it, it's just numbers on a screen until somebody withdraws it, you know, and it, I don't, go ahead. Uh, 
a beagle. I, 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 I don't know if, it, if the sound just dropped, but the price is approaching 71420 as we approach midnight. Oh, my God. Sweet Lord, if I win this fucking bet. Y'all, like, it's going to be a really slippery slope. I named this Bitcoin Gamblers Anonymous for a reason. If I win this first bet y'all like y'all are going to need to come and help me like i'm going to be i'm going to be i'm going to be gambling sats on the uh, on the t- block time hash rate and everything in between it's probably better for me if i don't win this short term it's pretty easy to notice what's going on like ethereum and the ethereum foundation everybody who's connected to ethereum is trying to maintain some sort of peg with bitcoin and keep retail in it you know and like that's clear as day to me like they what are, yeah what are you saying? Go look at the Ethereum Bitcoin price and watch the watch the. Price. You're saying it's Ethereum people that are selling Bitcoin to. Yes, the Ethereum price. Foundation has a ton of Bitcoin. A hundred percent, they do, and they run trading algorithms to maintain their Bitcoin price peg. It's absolutely going on. I mean that like we're we're flirting with conspiracy theories, but I'll 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 entertain that idea. I mean that like Safedine says like Ethereum is the anus from which all shit coins emanate, and I firmly believe that. So like we 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 could talk shit about Ethereum and here man, man, manipulating the Bitcoin price. Yeah, they absolutely do. It, it, it absolutely do. Like it's, it's <laughs> like, if you watched it for long enough, you can see it. Like look at. Do you look have at, any like information? That we can we can see for this. I mean, you can go look at how much Bitcoin they have and how much they got in the pre-sale and how much they have. It's Beagle, it's you, it's Beagle, dude. He's unloading right now. Right now, he's pushing the price down so he can win his. Right bet. now, I mean, that's like Gary. I mean, like actually, Gary, you just you just fucking <laughs> called it out. I'm I'm I'm, 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 dude, I'm, I'm worth you guys, I'm worth fifty million dollars, and I'm just selling right now room. to win this bet. I don't know what's the bet. Took a hundred thousand satoshis. It's all gamble. Hundred thousand satoshis. In this hundred thousand satoshis, and what's the what's the price points? Price at midnight Eastern yeah, but there's time five, tonight. There's five or six guys in the bet. Yeah, check. There are five. Check, or six check my feed, and you'll see it. You'll see it re- retweeted with Fred and British Hodel. And we have another one for the having, and another one uh, for end of year. And I'm sure we'll have another one by the time this space is ends. So, so there's a price point for tomorrow or tonight or like. Tonight at midnight, brother. And oh, so tonight at midnight, if, yeah. it, if it closes between 71 and 72, who wins? You? No, we're all dialed in for specific bets. Check out check out my feed. I, I'm locked in at 71, 420. Gary had two bets because he's a fucking legend, so he called the top and the bottom. British is at like you know, 72, 50, somewhere in the middle there. Uh, it's going to be tight. Uh, I'm not the top. It, Fred's at seventy three five. He's out. British is out. Is there a um, like a Price is Right rules? Where you hey Gary, over? let's uh, let's let's just give it let's give it a little bit. Who knows? We got twenty three minutes. We got we got all the time in the it's world. Bitcoin. Gentlemen. Exactly, dude. Is there Price is Right rules where you can't go over? No, I I, I called that out. No, it's like no. This like isn't blackjack, man. Closest, but we do try and keep it because we're all distinguished gentlemen here. Like it's kind of messed up if you go like one over the guy in front of you. So we try and keep it respectable and give each other a little bit of a buffer room. Is the Coinbase price? Is that what you're uh, trading about? view is what is what we agreed upon. So the uh, what is it XBT X, XBT price? Is that what they you, like? I don't know how trading view comes up with their price. Don't they, that, like, that was a Fred thing. I'm not a trading view guy. I, it's I, like a market average or what? I, I, no, I'll let somebody else speak to that. I just agreed to it because I was trying to, to keep the action flowing. We, 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 don't, we don't fucking know. So we're, we're trusting Fred with this one. We, we Somebody get him in this space right now so he can speak to why he was so adamant about trading view being our, uh, <laughs> our, our data. Well, I think he, well, the, re- the reason he was saying it was it wasn't Coinbase or it wasn't Binance. It wasn't a, you know. Yeah, what's the... Uh, What's that one site that you said? BTC USD. Yeah. BTC yeah, what is it? USD. BTC. BTC.USD. USD. Yeah. Hyphen. But yeah. And that's at 71620. It's getting pushed down right now, guys. Who's out there doing that? 716. Now, who's. It's me, man. I'm, I'm selling. I'm selling bags. <laughs> Beagle's winning, dude. He's all over this. And we got less than 21 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. 
We gotta get, we gotta get best. Fred in here. Somebody, somebody, call Fred personally if you have his number and tell him to jump in this space. Can we go back to the Ethereum Foundation thing? I can't get over that. Like, I feel like we should talk about that. If I mean, we, we 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 could we could talk conspiracy theories in here. I mean, the the Ethereum Foundation is uh, backhandedly suppressing the price of Bitcoin. Look at uh, it. I mean, according you know, to somebody Vitalik on, even, on Vitalik even admitted to it, like that he sold the top at a certain point and doubled the ethereum foundation's cash runway like how could vitalik expect in any capacity to suppress the price of bitcoin for a, any period look of how time? much bitcoin they have look how much bitcoin the the ethereum I'll, foundation. I'll, 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 I'll bite do you know how much bitcoin they have are you able to say like oh yeah fifty thousand bitcoin what, what's the answer to that i mean the exact number you can look a it lot. up you a can lot. Get, yeah you can look i it need up. a number it's on they, uh, they have a lot i'll tell you what it is <laughs> They have a lot in their Me cells. too. So does Gary. He has a lot too. So does British. Whoa, we all have a, lot, have a fucking lot. Nowhere close. Like, they sold their original token for Bitcoin. Like, <laughs> like they printed a token out of thin air and sold it to for Bitcoin at a Bitcoin price. Like, I mean, I'll entertain the idea because, you know, FTX was doing that shit too. So if like, they're I'm suppressing not... the price, they fucking suck at suppressing the price. I just hope that well, y'all saw do they? I mean, because like, always man but bun since the ETFs are out on Brian Armstrong's head today. Have you guys seen that meme of somebody using like a Cheeto as a door lock? That's that's the Ethereum Foundation right now. Oh, dude, yeah, we're like we're we're we're, we're, we're held rock solid by that Cheeto securing us. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's kind of what it is. Like, but like, you know, it, like eventually it's gonna. It's you know they're not going to be able to continue doing it like because they're like it's just the 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 economics and it don't work out like but they think oh. they can be the next central bank they think they they absolutely think they can replace Bitcoin like there's no question about it that's their goal to pivot is there, is their balance public like how how would you even check that I mean they're publicly traded companies. okay and wrap so, yeah. Bitcoin alone that. People are hold. You, they they give you a token, and you get big, and and they, you give them Bitcoin. And they give you a token. In Wrap Bitcoin alone, they have one hundred and ninety five thousand, and that doesn't even include. The Ethereum Foundation does not control Wrapped Bitcoin. Yes, they the Bitcoin that's held in trust for it, they do. Also, you just said that Ethereum has been outperforming Bitcoin in the past one year. Bitcoin's up two twenty three percent. Ethereum's no, up one fifty five percent. Since the ETFs launched and cash flow started throwing flowing in from the ETFs. But here, let me let me finish what I'm saying. For for a year, Bitcoin is up two twenty three percent. Ether is up one hundred and fifty five percent. So, right. yeah, maybe they're right. up, over uh, any, over the long term. It's not going to work. But like they absolutely do it to keep people on. Like look at it. Look at it since the ETF flows. How, like, there's no ETF flow money flowing into Ethereum. So how is it outperforming Bitcoin since the ETF started? Like, just answer that simple question. It doesn't. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll take a stab at that, and I'm 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 not an expert here. That's a lot of retail money, dumb retail money. If you think that's what's doing it, you know. The market cap is significantly less, and I think there is just the general crypto, and I fucking cringe even saying the word mentality that, like, when Bitcoin rips, these other tokens are going to rip harder. So I think that's part of it, but it's still a fucking shit coin, and everybody in here knows it. Yeah, I know. Just watch the Bitcoin ETH price, or the ETH Bitcoin price, like, whenever Bitcoin runs up. There's 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 trades on the margin that happen that like so it maintains the same price value like day to day and it it, it, it appears that you know like to the unsophisticated un technically unknowledgeable user or trader that eats just as safe as a store value like there's no question that's their goal like it, it's like they don't hide it <laughs> you know they like, they literally call it ultrasound money like. They're fucks. <laughs> like they're no good. I mean, yeah. I mean, we all could agree they're all completely. And you would put past them to manipulate price when they literally talked about selling the top. And yeah, but the thing is, though, they're so fucking committed to try and get their own ETF approved, and the ETH Foundation has given so much money to lobbyists that I think that they are trying to just 
you know, undo the wrongs of all of the shit in their history with like the pre mine and the, 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 the shady connections with the people connected to the ETH foundation. So I, I think there's a, like a, a portion of that at play right now. Okay. Um, but, but regardless, like I said, you know, you say that the Bitcoin wrapped in Ethereum tokens isn't controlled by the Ethereum Foundation. It absolutely is. I mean, I, you, I, I didn't say that. I don't, no, it's I don't not. I mean, that. I'm a yes, Bitcoin maximalist, and that's not how I'm a okay. Bitcoin maximalist, and that's not how wrapped Bitcoin works. So show me, the, show me the wallet that Bitcoin is held in trust for WBTC. It's a smart contract. No, you can't put Bitcoin technically in a smart contract on Ethereum. Like. You're giving them, they're exchanging a token. Yeah, that's why it's called wrapped. It's a yeah, smart contract where I you know. give them your Bitcoin and they give you fake Bitcoin called WBTC. And they say, hey, if, if have they have fun. that much in wrapped Bitcoin, there's no way to know. Is there a way to know that they're not using fractional reserve accounting on that to be able to manipulate the supply? Does, does wrapped Bitcoin follow Bitcoin covenants? The provenance of Bitcoin time chain, or no? The rat <laughs> Bitcoin itself, no. Yes, it okay. can't because it's not on. That's the whole point. It's not. Then on it's the irrelevant. Blockchain. Then it's irrelevant. It's yeah, not I, Bitcoin. I, I, I bumped Richard down so we could maybe move the conversation on, so we're not spending too much time in a Bitcoin space as we're at all time high uh, in Bitcoin and in anonymous and gamblers anonymous uh, talking about Ethereum. Uh, but you know, related tangentially that maybe we could spend some time talking about is uh, stable coins. Um, and how much Bitcoin they're buying and keeping on their balance sheets. Uh, that's hugely positive for Bitcoin. And Tether, I mean, they seem largely reputable. And I think they had a, a, one of the major uh, accounting firms come in and look at their books recently who said they own all of this Bitcoin. They're buying Bitcoin in record amounts. And it's positive for Bitcoin. And they're not a shitcoin. So turning it over for if somebody wants to speak to that as well. I know nothing. Well, guys, let me just give you a little, can I give you a math report here? I think if I've done this correct, and this price is moving very, very rapidly right now, it must be somebody buying. Jeez, you guys are just manipulating the market. Anyway, Beatles at 71420. I'm at 73238. The price right now is 71740. Let me just plug that in because I had it at 80. And that means that uh, Beetle is within $320 of being in the target, and I'm within 498 if I've done this math correct. Yeah, it's fucking um, good. So fucking tight close, little Jared. game here. $178 delta here, man. Uh, I, I, I'm, tempted, I'm tempted to go double or nothing with you here in the final. In the final See, in the future. See, in the future, what we should do is we just should say, hey, it's like a, 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 a you know, a thousand sats per delta, the delta between all these bets. That would be really awesome. <laughs> See, I could really get degenerate on this stuff. Oh, I mean, you well, um, welcome. Welcome to the crew, Gary. I mean, we're, 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 we're going to yeah. keep on this. We're going to start offering different, all kinds of different special bets. I mean, what, what, what is going to be, uh, yeah, we do need to seal this into the blockchain to make it official. We need to make sure that this is just lives lives in infamy forever. Don't inscribe arbitrary data onto my blockchain. All right, fair, fair, strong statement from on chain right now. I'm, I'm guessing he's not an ordinals fan over here. If we want to open up that can of worms, I do not. I've spent enough spaces opening up that can. Yeah, no, this, this, this is Bitcoin gamblers anonymous. So we're gonna keep it. We're gonna keep it fun. We don't necessarily need to start screaming at each other over <laughs> ETH wrapped Bitcoin ordinals.
if anybody uh, in the audience who isn't a speaker wants to come up here and say something, uh, please re- re- request uh, request the mic and come on up here and join join the party. We've got 11, 11 minutes left until I win this bet and do a victory lap uh, to end all victory laps in front of my Bitcoin bros. I'm going to hit the hair. Y'all have fun. All right. Have a good night, man. You know, we started this show, a guy, a guy came on the show and he talked about real estate, if you remember that, Bitcoin, and he talked about his girlfriend um, and going through the math, right? She said, hey, well, if you go through the math, it's more expensive to rent than to own a home. Well, and everyone agreed on that. That was about an hour ago. But in fact, okay, I would actually love that person to bring his girlfriend up I'm not sure why his girlfriend. She doesn't use social media. Oh, well, that was me. But like, I think, yeah. Okay, cool. I would, I would actually be happy to go with you through the math because, like, if you agree with her, you need to do the math again, dude. There's no chance that it's less expensive to own a home than rent. No, I, I said it was cheaper to rent. It is my, absolutely. And you, her, and her logic, you said, her logic she was, said her logic, sorry, God, make her show it to you on a spreadsheet, bro. Well, it, she just broke down the math. She said, if you assume you rent for $2,000 a month and I forget what, I think it was over 30 years. She said, if you're renting for 2k a month for each year, that's 24,000 per year over 30 years, that's 720 grand. And I tried to say that over 30 years, your property taxes and your all the expenses that go into owning a home she was like yeah but it's probably not going to be more than 720 grand and she was like and that's assuming that your rent only stays <laughs> well she's also never owned a home so <laughs> yeah no shit dude she's not ne- she's never built a company either has she? no we're we're younger yeah so i would encourage people when they're asking people for financial advice a mistake i made was I listening to people that had no fucking experience whatsoever, including a girlfriend? Like, dude, you know, let's say you have a massive car in area, Mar Martin, and, and you got really good and laid by your girlfriend last night. Are you going to really ask her to save you? Like, you guys should not take advice from family members that aren't expert investors. Like, it makes no sense at all. I mean, I think the problem, though, is um, even the quote unquote expert investors are playing from a playbook that's completely outdated and like what worked, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, isn't going to work anymore. And that's why Bitcoin is completely different than anything. It's, that's dude, ever it's, working so, it's working so well for the super rich. It's unbelievable. Okay. This is working. It's worked ex- excellently for me. What you you guys need to do is get out of that class, man. It's literally the only class that the system that you complain so much about can suck its beak into like like you are it the the super poor have been bled out guys okay i i really believe that like ask yourself why are we doing this like i'm not really gambling okay i actually don't want to encourage gambling um but i'm protecting myself from a fucking monster vampire and and let me tell you something I, i have a thesis about michael saylor okay i think he's a brilliant man and I am so glad that his business was being attacked from every angle and that he was smart enough to realize the threat to his business. And that is what drove him to this innovation. He had no choice. Google, Microsoft, Amazon, these companies could print, I mean, do hire every good coder. Okay. He had no chance he knew it. And he jumped. You ain't going to see any Fortune 500 companies do what he, he did because they don't have to. They can hide behind the Ponzi system. That's why I keep saying we will make a lot more impact, guys, if we, you know, use the system. I can use it, man. Okay, stop paying your credit card debt. Stop having credit cards. Like, don't, just don't use the enemy. Starve them of transactions. Take all your fiat you can possibly get uh, from anybody that wants to buy a house, dude. If people want to buy a house so bad, sell them one. 
okay? Like I got one I'll sell you right now. If you do the math, and, and young man, sit down with your girlfriend, okay? And go, hey, you know what? I realized I actually haven't done the math. Now, personally, I wouldn't even talk to her about it, okay? But, um, but go through the math, okay? The math is absolutely, overwhelmingly compelling. The only reason that someone will get so stuck up on ownership of a home versus rental is pure ego. Pure, I want to look cool. I want to look good. I want to have my little badge to the you know country club, whatever suburban that is. This was sold to your parents, man. It was a freaking banking system scheme. So the only reason houses go up is because the dollar's getting crushed, guys. I mean, they, they, there's nothing intrinsically valuable about a building that was built 15 years ago when you know that our culture changes every 8 to 10, 12 years. I mean, years. they've sold That's owning a home to every American as your ticket to the American dream. I mean, I, I, I've heard yeah. that since I was a kid. And I think you, it's I, the debt machine, I, mean, man. I think you're right that like the, the game has fundamentally changed. And if you're 25 years old and you've scrounged together $10,000, are you bet? Are are you better off buying ten thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin and holding on to that hard asset for the next thirty years, or taking out a loan on an overpriced property for the next thirty years and seeing seeing how that works out for you? I mean, who knows? And people said at the bottom of the bear market, they were calling Michael Saylor a psychopath. He was going on podcasts. I think Lex Friedman was one of them. He was saying, take out a second mortgage, buy Bitcoin, max out your credit cards, buy Bitcoin. And that was a super, super risky, dangerous thing to be saying two years ago. And look at that. I mean, if, if you had done that, you'd be up, you know, three and a half X right now. I mean, total legend. So, yeah, no, I, I wish I could have done that. I mean, I, I stacked what I could. But the, the reason that she, so she comes from a different world than I do. No, no, you didn't. Did, did you really stack what you could every drop? No, absolutely not. I totally, I totally Thank fucked you. off. I didn't, yeah, no, I, I look back on it and I'm like, wow, I, I could have owned so much everybody, more. Everybody on this show, dude, tell that story, okay? Because everybody in this store, I have uh, this little room we're in. I've been in this space really well with you guys for the last nine months, but maybe three years in earnest, maybe four. Um, and I would love to hear, because I hear all you guys, hey, nobody's going to be able to buy Bitcoin. That's bullshit, okay? Like if people want to sacrifice, sell your damn house, okay? You cannot think about it. Look, you guys are sitting here going, there's going to be a deep depression the fiat's going to collapse. That means houses aren't going to be worth shit. No neighborhoods are going to be good. Even if you're living in a great house, the neighborhoods are going to be shit, a la California. So, Zong, please tell me, man, what should you have done you didn't do? Because everybody on this call is asking themselves if this is too expensive. And it's just the start. I'm telling you, this is absolutely the start of the greatest real estate place in the world. Oh, you cut out for a second. But I don't. I don't know if that was me. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, so for people to make that sacrifice, that requires them to have a deeper understanding that I think a lot of people just don't have. So, for example, I could have stopped eating out so much. I could have downsized my car. I could have done various credit arbitrage. Um, I, I I'm not a very high earner, so I in my limited capacity, stacked what I could. But yeah, I still fucked about constantly with all kinds of bad habits and just wasted an obscene amount of money, even though I had the belief then that I do now, um, to a degree. I knew where Bitcoin was going. That It was just a certainty. And it, it's hard to overpower uh, certain like habits and vices, even when you know that sacrificing now for furtherance of a future gain. Like, should I go buy a $10 burrito, even though I know realistically this is costing me so much more than $10? Should I do that multiple times a week? It's like, it, it isn't always as simple as, well, I just won't do that. Like, you would think it is, but that, that's not always how the brain works. Um, 
But yeah, no, I absolutely should have stacked more, especially during the COVID crash down to 3K. Uh, we got two minutes left until this bet closes, and I'm sitting here with uh, trading view open here, uh, feeling feeling real smug. 71.616 is what I'm seeing. Gary, is that is that what you're seeing on your end there, buddy? You know, I think we need to have a third party, uh, you know, do an audit. Maybe we bring in EY <laughs> or one of KPMG, my buddies over there. I mean, maybe we need a third party. I mean, we're in the final countdown right now. I just wish that Fred, I mean, we're, he's missing in action. Well, why is he Of course not he's missing. Face? Dude, no, notice these ballers. They can go on these shows and do all this stuff. But when it comes to making the bet, and I bet if he was winning, he'd be. Oh, winning. I bet. I, you know, yeah, true yeah. words, Gary. True <laughs> words. If he was winning, he'd My be in goodness here right gracious. Now. Okay. <laughs> 654. Man, maybe I should just go put a couple of bids in here. I mean, could I actually have too many? Hey, let's just, let's just simmer down, bro. Let's let this play out without uh, without influencing without the Without manipulating market right the market. Now. That's one of my pet peeves about this industry. Because when I came in, they were like, oh, man, everybody's going to, the banks are going to manipulate. I'm like, you mean like 20 other guys have been doing for 10 years here? And nobody, nobody knows how to answer that question. <laughs> hey, Beagle, congratulations. I mean, I just fucking hit this fucking thing right now. I'm showing, I'm showing 12, p, 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, trading view, 71599. Uh, let's fucking go. Good, Good job, job, buddy. Congratulations. Job. I, show, I show 612, but I'll give it to you. Just kidding. Woo! Yep. Congrats, guys. I'm going to drop off. That was great. All right, Thomas. It was a pleasure as always, man. I'll catch you on the next one, brother. I see it. All right, bye. All right, Peter, you've, you've had your hand up. I was waiting to call on you until, until I uh, locked in my victory with this bet. You're up. You're up, man. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> I was just listening to the conversation, and uh, I think there is a lot of opportunity out there for individuals, um, either from Millennial or Gen Y or Z. And I think you really, people are looking in the wrong places. If you live in one of these blue cities, you should really look at the nonprofit system and the system that's actually giving away a bunch of taxpayer dollars for um, the illegal immigration. And if you start a nonprofit, I mean, you don't pay any taxes and you could have all types of administrators that then have to get paid salaries because people have to be paid for their good work. And so it's amazing because there's a total, there's a total taking and redistribution of the tax dollars for these things that nobody voted for, but they're going to happen anyway. So the best thing to do is I think in New York, there's a program where they're giving out debit cards that are loaded with enormous amounts of money so the immigrants because you have to make sure you take care of them. Uh, they get free housing, free food. There's all types of perks and benefits. And so what I would do is if I was an enterprising individual uh, in my 20s, I would think about maybe looking at the nonprofit system, stay, starting one of these things up. Catholic Charities has a racket. I mean, one of the best rackets you could think of, almost mafia-esque, where they siphon money off from different individuals and the taxpayer is none the wiser. It's just amazing what's going on, but there is a lot of opportunity out there. So I encourage you take advantage of what these blue states are doing. Get in there, um, put together the right type of board, and have at it, man. And then siphon that money into Bitcoin and other cryptos. And even if you really want to get enterprising, think about the unbanked, right? Think about the individuals that operate in the shadows selling fentanyl, uh, cocaine, different types of narcotics right on the street like it's legal. In New York, at least I see it all the time. Think about getting them into the crypto system and being able to use crypto so they could put their money into the system. And then the wheel goes around and around and around. So I think that if you just put your noggin and you put your thinking cap on, you use your noodle, that there's so many opportunities to do things to benefit yourself and the community, and you'll have a whole bunch of new voting class individuals that will vote to continue to give more things away, which will only benefit your nonprofit. So 
you really want to take a look at that. And I know I believe in everybody in here and people, I believe that they could do it. It's an amazing thing that's happening to the country. And I'm, I'm excited to continue watching it while I eat my popcorn. So that's my, uh, that's my two cents. Awesome. I heard noodle noggin, and I want to put you in front of all the middle schoolers to orange pill them right now. Uh, I'm opening it up now that the bed is closed out, and I'm just going to uh, silently take my victory lap. If anybody's in the audience and wants to come up here and, and say something, please request it. I'll, I'll let you up. And if anybody else who's a speaker right now wants to say something, uh, Blue 3, I see your hand raised. Turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats. I don't know what the trade is, but I think you sound pumped, so congrats on that. Um, 100,000 100, Satoshis is what we're doing on all of these bets right now. So it's nothing now, but I mean, we play this tape forward 10 years from now, it's going to be worth like $50 million. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, and that's, hey, anything is something. 10 years? So, yeah, 10 years. That Some people think long term. I, I, this, this is what I wanted to say. I'm, I'm, I don't know what the, I thought the topic was Gamblers Anonymous, because I know a lot of people who trade like, a gambler or like an alcoholic or such. Um, so I just want to give my two cents. I'm not going to say I'm like a millionaire or whatever, but I'm successful enough. I've been trading for like seven years, um, maybe more. I, I don't know. I was buying Bitcoin on local Bitcoins with cash. So um, anyway, you got to know how to trade and what your trading plan is. So just come up with a plan. If you have a hundred bucks, trade with that. Put it on a fucking non-custodial wallet somewhere, not a mask, something easy, and get a VPN and just start trading. And and learn your learn what works for you. Obviously, don't sell for less than you bought. I mean, that's that's plain and simple. Bitcoin doubles every year, so just don't sell under what you bought. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions or whatever, I love this shit. So it's good to see a bunch of people trying to get into it. Awesome. Yeah, I love this shit, too. And these are the best days. I mean, it just, I, I don't know about y'all, but I didn't, I didn't do shit at the fiat mine today. Just watching price bump, jumping in these spaces, I mean, it feels so good. And if you were buying through that bear market, like you're you're a fucking legend and you deserve every ounce of this victory lap right now. Hey, where do you guys think Bitcoin is going? Like, say, Christmas time. Like, we're all nestled around, you know, roasting chestnuts, opening presents, Christmas Eve. Where do you think Bitcoin is at at that point? Dude, we, 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 we got 100 k Satoshi bet on this right now. Check out check out the, 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 the posts on our timelines. I, I'm at uh, 142 for for the end of the year, and we're all, I think the lowest was, you know, 120 all the way up. I think somebody called 420 in, in our gambling, uh, Bitcoin gambling group. Okay, and so Bitcoin, you're, you're, you're looking at like a double of right now, right? Effectively, that'd be a 2x, is that correct? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, like they're, there is not a single bear in the group, and we were on a huge space the other day, and we could not come up with like an intelligent, reasonable bear scenario. I mean, at all. I mean, the the only thing that somebody proposed that was somewhat reasonable is like there's a major problem at Coinbase, and that sends the price down twenty percent. And we even agreed if that happens, it's going to recover instantly. Like there is there, there's it, it's it's literally like the rocket ship is taking off right now, and I haven't heard a single bearish scenario explained to me that I can get behind, um, and even Steelman. Right, so like, even like, now I'm just going to put my thinking cap on. Let's say there's like, um, there's a shutdown, right, where there's no power for 90 days. And it's, it's basically, it's like crazy solar flares. You know how that sun yeah, gets. Yeah, dude, the, the world ends, the price is going down, huge, for sure. <laughs> but we're not the world ending, right? Because the world didn't end when we had the pandemic. It just shut down for a little bit. And people, you know, the big box stores made a killing. So that would never be able to happen again, though, right? Like that, that's something that's way beyond the pale. Like the government is well, the, the power grid is super secure. Or the Chinese are not like getting land next to where power sources are, or or critical infrastructure. Everything is just like, man, they they this machine is humming. Security out the wazoo. Like 
nothing could be bad. Nothing's coming up, right? Like the Russia wouldn't try to do anything like that, right? If everything is just gold, you're saying, right? That couldn't happen, right? I mean, I mean that, that like no. I mean, there's there, there's total black swan events that could come out of nowhere. I said it earlier, like a, a nuclear power plant explodes in Ukraine, Bitcoin is going down fifty percent that day. But like the, the the ones who carry around their balls in a wheelbarrow, like we're going to be backing up the truck if something like that happens, and we have a black swan event like that because we know. Wall Street's going to still show up and keep buying Bitcoin the next day. The demand isn't going going anywhere. All all of the things that are voting for the price skyrocketing, they're not going away just because something out of the world crazy happen it happens. And yes, like if the power goes out for months on end, it's going to be brutal. But also, people there's going to be blood in the streets if that happens. Like the price of Bitcoin is not going to be the biggest worry if the power is out for 30 days. I mean, most people don't even have five days worth of food in their house. So, I mean, yeah, it would be ugly, but we're not going to be worried. We're not going to be hopping on X, talking Bitcoin price bloodbath if the power is out and uh, people are riding in the streets just to feed their families. I got you. Um, do do you get? Are you into any other like alts? You are, do you like Ethereum? Do you like what's going on with that? Do you think that no, there's? No, you don't like Ethereum. Okay. I mean, no. I mean, like I'm kind of in like the Bitcoin. Not kind of. I guess there is no kind of Bitcoin maximalists. But like, I I really have no uh, space or capacity for shitcoiners um, or for shitcoins at all. So, and Ethereum is a shitcoin. And it, that, that, I want to classify that according to you. Ethereum is a shitcoin. Ethereum is the anus from which all shit coins emanate. Gotcha. Um, do you do you um, have you ever looked into like memetics? Do you know what mem- memetics are? If this is another shit coin, uh, you're not going to be a speaker. No, no, I'm, I, it's not. Definitely. Listen, I had this experience earlier in the day, and I know that people are very prickly pears, and you have to be very tiptoeish. So I don't even want to go there because I don't want to be censored or thrown off. You know, I don't want to have that happen. I already get enough of that with the Joe Biden administration, and I don't want to have that happen here. So let's just keep it nice and cozy and comfortable. And- I had I had to pull him off the stage. I was getting strong shitcoin vibes from that, and I'm, I'm sorry. I, we, we just got to keep it Bitcoin only here. Um, and, you know, you're, you're a n- nice guy. Uh, you you could explore shit coins on your own time and your own energy, but certainly not in one of my spaces. I gave him just like that ten seconds just to see. He could have simplified it so much. Hey, you know what? Not going to talk about this. Change the subject. <laughs> but he kept going. <laughs> I, mean, I, I gave him. I gave him that little bit. I was like, okay, nice guy. Like he's walking it back, and like it just went a little too far. Uh, someone's giving a bunch of thumbs down. <laughs> Blue three, what's up? Oh man, <laughs> that, that was pretty funny. I, I understand you get you putting him down there. Um, he, it did sound like he was about to plug a coin. Um, anyway, I, I trade everything. It doesn't matter. I was wondering, do you read the charts, or do you have like a crew that you read charts with? Is that is that how you trade, or is it just uh, me, I mean, like a uh, I'm not, I'm not a trader. I just buy, you know, buy Bitcoin. Don't sell your Bitcoin. That's that's my mentality gotcha. with it. And I gotcha. like I, I, I'm not opposed to the chart people and the people who like dig in all of that. But I have started laughing a little bit when people are like just calling out that they're just drawing lines through these charts and saying this is going to happen, and they don't necessarily take into a picture, take into account like the macroeconomic environment. And they'll they'll be looking at lines through graphs, and they won't appreciate that you know BlackRock bought five hundred million dollars worth of Bitcoin yesterday. Uh, so no, I'm not a trader. I just buy and hold it and hope 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 to get rich like the rest of y'all degenerates. <laughs> right on. <laughs> no, that's that's fair. That's fair. I it, it's that's the good thing about Bitcoin is you don't even need to read charts to do that. I mean that's how I started for sure was just buying and knowing that that this was going to be what topples governments like Bitcoin will take change the money out of the money changers hands and into our hands. Um, but I will say that I knew this was coming and I, I drew lines two, three years ago when I started trading and you could still see those lines and they all respected this last, this last bull run. And the only reason I'm talking about it is because I've been doing it long enough to where I'm not, I know that 
drawing support and resistance lines. Just those two things. If you can learn support and resistance, you can become a successful trader. And um, it's you just start small. Just start small and practice, and and uh, don't over leverage. <laughs> that's that's a big, big thing. I like uh, the guy who was speaking earlier talking about selling your house and and uh, putting it and investing it and renting and finding a way. I mean, that's basically what I did. I, I, I've been sober like six years, and I don't think I would have been able to do that if I was drinking. Because when you drink, you get lazy. Not only does it take your money away, but it, you get lazy. You start eating out more. Just everything that comes with it. So my rec those are my two biggest recommendations. is Don't fucking drink. Don't do drugs like weed, whatever. But even weed will slow you down. I even stopped doing that. And uh, it changed my fucking life. Yeah, I mean, like, changed congratulations me. on your sobriety, man. Uh, good for you. Um, to, to take it back to the trading thing, though, I mean, with Bitcoin, and a lot of people say this much smarter than me. I mean, if you're selling Bitcoin, what are you buying? So I get, like, if you want to trade securities, if you want to if you want to go long, go short in equities, like, that, that's fine. But, like, it, what, what are you buying if you trade Bitcoin? I mean, you're holding the hardest asset that humans have ever invented. So if you're going to sell that on the hope that you're going to buy it low, lower and then get back in and make more money. I think that's just really short-sighted. And I think like the, 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 the models yeah. and the cycles are broken going forward. So you might not see that, you know, that huge drawdown that, that we're used to at the end of a cycle. No, no, I totally agree. And that's, that's where I would say you just have to diversify. Like I have a bag of us dollars. I have a bag of Bitcoin. And if I sell a little bit of Bitcoin, I, or I make money on the dollars or shit coins, I put it into Bitcoin and I have a bag that I don't touch. So you make, you build bags of whatever asset. It could be silver, gold, gunpowder, whatever asset. And you, you take a little bit of profits each time and put it into that, into those, those bags that you need to survive on. You know, food is one of them. You gotta have a bag for food. So I, I, I'd say to, to do all everything and, and prioritize that's what i did like you want a new car that's what you save up for but you buy a new car as soon as you drive it off the lot it's worthless or worth less i should say so you, you gotta um you gotta think about your actions before you even take that plunge of selling the bitcoin or selling the gold or have a plan to keep building that back up and then, and then it's, there's long-term, short-term, medium-term trades. So think, what am I going to do this move for in the long-term, short-term, and then stick to that plan? That's, that was my biggest trouble, was sticking to the plan, letting emotion get in the way, fear and greed. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I mean, it, it, it's getting late for me. Uh, I stayed up way past my bedtime just to see uh, this bet get locked in. Uh, Y'all are legends. Thank you for jumping in here. If you're a speaker, please, everybody in the audience, jump in, give them a follow, give them give them a retweet. Uh, we're going to be doing this, I'm sure, again tomorrow morning uh, for some more Bitcoin gambling action. This shit's going to the moon. I love y'all.